All right, uh, so I have another gig tonight. Uh, it's like a jazz fusion type of thing. Got some Michael Brecker tunes, some um, some Mike Stern tunes. So I thought I'd, I'd put together, <clears throat> as always, a few few sounds from that era, so to speak, and try to not exactly, but uh, try to get in the ballpark of that kind of eighties, nineties fusion stuff. Um, and um, so I have a chorus. So this is a patch. And I'm going to explain a couple of tricks of things that I, that I used to do in, in gigs, and I still do. Um, so the the action we're going to use an amp. So the the amp in this patch is just for reference. And as always, remember I'm going to upload everything on that uh, folder that I use, and I'm going to find you will find a link in the description and then a pinned comment to download. It's free. If you want to make a donation, you can make a donation. But it's these are all patches that I make for my gigs. So, uh, and I will always try to tweak them. So that's why I put them in a folder to have access to them rather than on the Lions community, which is something I used to do. So in this patch, I actually have uh, a long and a short reverb. So this is the short reverb. And this is the longer reverb is two plates. This is a longer reverb. This is the shorter reverb. I have a compressor to, to even things out. I find that in the more uh, uh, like fusion pop stuff, um, it, it, it's nice to, um, to have more of an even sound, so to speak. And I'm using two guitars, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, then I have just an overdrive. To have a bit more of a push with the solos for certain like like funkier solos for the speak it's just a little bit of uh, of uh, of boost really more than another drive it's the timmy you know it's that kind of timmy uh, drive which i really like i think it's one of my favorites actually in the line six um, stuff then i have a transistor a transistor delay which um yeah, transistor tape delay, which is the one I probably use the most with very, very little flutter. I, I feel that it kind of gets out of the way. You can still hear it, but it's not, uh, it's just a halo basically. It's not like the YouTube thing, so to speak. Um, same thing, but um, this is probably one of my favorite um, effects on the line six. It's called a heliosphere. And it is basically like a, like a, a breather than a delay, so that there is that bloom effect. And I use it more for like the Oldswood style. Because obviously it gives you so much more um, sustain, so to speak, especially with a chorus, I really like it. It, it really screams like 80s fusion, really. Um, I like that. And um, so these are these are the patches. And again, as I said, the, the amp is just there for reference. I will, you know, if you use an amp, I will probably turn it off. And this is in mono for now, but you could probably use it in stereo if you wanted to. Um, I have an EQ here. And uh, the reason why I have that EQ is because I'm using two guitars. I have a Strat and I have a, a Gibson 335, which I use more for the jazz stuff because we're, we're going to play some straight ahead jazz as well. Uh, and obviously, I'm just going to use some reverb for that, and that's it. I'm not going to use any other effects. But I find that it's quite useful to have an EQ so that when you swap guitars, you get a consistent tone because obviously, you know, Gibsons and have way more output than. Uh, um, uh, than a Fender and a Strat in general, and I don't want to, you know, mess about with with the amp. I want to have just presets over, so that I plug in the guitar, switch the EQ on, and I get, you know, a, a sound that is different enough, but it's matched in terms of level and in terms of EQ. Because obviously the three through five is a lot more bass as well. Uh, so you can see I've removed uh, a little bit of bass and quite a bit of attack, like the three K. 
because the my, my 335 is a lot of attack so i've removed some of that to, to to mellow the sound out so to speak and that will match a little bit the volume you know obviously the volume i'm not too worried about because i have a volume pedal this is like a volume wire i don't think i'm going to use the wire tonight but uh this is a volume pedal uh to get you know the the volume just right so to speak i don't use it very much it's like more like an on and off like a mute switch so to speak uh you can use the uh you know, the tuner as well the tuner is, is set to mute so yeah, that's the that's the layout for tonight. Uh, I'm really getting. I have a bigger pedal board, pedal board with individual pedals, but I feel that for these smaller gigs where I just have to rock up and uh, and just plug in, I feel that this is a lot more convenient, so to speak, and the sounds are good enough now to um, you know to play, especially when an amp when uh, yeah, it's most of the sound is made by the amp, so to speak. So. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about uh, just this little thing that I do when I learn tunes, so to speak. And um, how do I learn tunes? Because I've made a, a video earlier on, which I can link again in the, in the pinned comment about learning tunes. And just recently, a Facebook, somebody on Facebook asked a question how to, to learn tunes. And I, I think my reply, and plus a couple of tricks that I got from other people's reply, uh, I found like a four stage, um, a four, a, a four stage, you know, four step uh, process that I use to learn tunes, and I, I tend to share this with my students. So the first one is without the guitar. Don't touch the guitar until you figured out the form of the tune, and if you have the time, try to listen to the tune a few times because so you want to create. Or a memory, meaning like feel when the bridge is coming in. Obviously, this is the example I'm going to give is for a tune that is a fusion tune. It's quite complex, but you can use this in any style. You know, you want to try, try and create that oral memory that is more than a visual memory. And the first thing I do, I actually, you can see here on a piece of paper, I actually jotted out the, the form. You can see this is quite an involved tune. And I write it down in my own way, like intro, eight bars, a funk, single line. Then I have four, I had one. Then I have four bars, power chord, riff. So this is quite descriptive. I don't want to put down the notes. Actually, I was given a chart for this tune, but I want to try not to use it. I want to memorize the tune because this is quite involved. I don't want to be staring at a chart for, for I just want to enjoy playing. Then I have a second head, then I have the bridge. Then I have, again, the same four bar power chord structure. Then the solo section. The solo section in this tune, actually, is different from the solo section in the chart that I was given. So I don't know if uh, the guy that has arranged the chart wants a different form. Also, the solo section here is quite uh, inconsistent, meaning that it's a 16 bar A, then A to D, then A to A, A to D, A to A again, of A again. Then the second soloist, which is Michael Brecker, um, actually this is, called, this is a tune called Tipitina, is a Mike Stone tune in, um, in the album Play. I'm pretty sure some of you might be uh, familiar with this tune. And then the second solo is completely random. It's just eight bars. It's all eight bar phrases, obviously, but it's eight bars in A. Then there is just drums and saxophone for eight bars. Then it's a power, there's a power chord riff, which is different from the other power, power chord riff. Then it's A bars D and the intro riff. Then the head, head two out. So you can see it's quite a complex song. Uh, but I've heard this tune, the song before. I've heard this song before. And I can say that I have enough oral memory to know how this tune goes. So once I figured this out, uh, and obviously this is just a one guitar tune. So it's not difficult for me to try and emulate what the guitarist is doing, Mike Stern is doing, where if it's a pop tune where there are many guitars, I want to try and create, and I am the only guitarist in the band, I want to try and create a guitar part that is consistent from the top to the, to the end of the song. Um, the second step is to learn the part that I have created. Okay. And the way I learn it 
is because I want to try, I want to be mindful about it. I don't want to try, I don't want to just kind of randomly play until it goes in because I will, in that case, memorize mistakes. Okay, I want to be mindful about it. What I do, I pick phrases and I loop those phrases until I create a muscle memory. The first phrase of Tipitina is something like, is something like this. So that's the first phrase. So I'm looping it until I play it consistently a fair few times in a row. Usually it's like six, seven to ten times. If I can play it in a row without making a mistake, then I can get, you know, the muscle memory is being created. If it's too difficult, just slow the tempo down and, and try to play it so that your brain can, can grab that. So the next step is to, to connect the second phrase, do the same thing with the second phrase. Just that, so I'm going to loop it. And then I'm, I'm going to connect the two. And I'll go through that process. Even though this sounds like it's, it, you know, it's taken a long time, the, the result is that you will have complete muscle memory by the end of the tune. And this will actually, it, it will allow you not to make, not to memorize mistakes, which is a common problem with beginners, so to speak, and not to practice mistakes while you're memorizing the tune. Um, once you get to the end of the tune, uh, you, the next step is to, to try and memorize what's different. Again, try to notice what's different in the form and make a note of that. Obviously, this is quite an, an unusual tune. So maybe with this tune, that doesn't apply so much. But let's say I noticed that at the very end, there is that riff again. And then there is an ending. So there's a, that's the difference, you know, the, the, uh, after, at the end of the, the head, each head, there's a phrase, and at the end there's the same phrase but with a different ending. So try to memorize these things. These things really help with, uh, with creating uh, an oral memory in your, in your head, so to, speak, so to speak, a map of the tune in your head. So try to catch the differences rather than what's similar, okay? So step four is try to play the original onto the recording. And here, this is, a, this is the trick. You want to go from really slow to quite fast and make sure that it's all pure muscle memory. You're not thinking about things because when, when you're on stage, the smallest thing might throw you off. There might be somebody that shouts or a light that shines. It's very common if you have lights on stage that there is a light that is pointed towards you and you cannot see the fretboard. There are lights, let's say, at the top of the stage, and the lights are shining into your eyes through the fretboard. This is very common, and you cannot see what you're doing. Uh, or another very common occurrence is that at the very end of each tune, the, the, sh the, the stage goes pitch black, okay? And sometimes you have to start the tune while your eyes are still, you know, acclimatizing to that, uh, to that change of light, so to speak. So you have to basically just grab the guitar and start playing and offer, offer, offer for the best, so to speak. That's why you need to create muscle memory when you're learning tunes. Of course, if it's like a small gig where it's more of a kind of informal atmosphere and, you know, it's just a bar gig, so to speak, then it's slightly different. You usually can see there are not many lights. Uh, but if you, as soon as you go into a slightly bigger stage, you really want to create muscle memory because you won't be able to to see much. Okay, even you might not be able to hear yourself. I mean, now nowadays with with in ears, that's you know that's been solved usually as a problem. But uh, but if you have full back monitors, sometimes you might not be able, able to hear yourself too much. Um, so again, try to create. You know, the, the point here is to create muscle memory. So you just turn up on stage, regardless if you're nervous, you can see, you can hear, you will be playing the tune, so to speak. So. Uh, again, stage four is to play along to the original by uh, uh, starting with a, a slow um, tempo all the way to a faster tempo where you actually go slightly faster than the original. So if the drummer calls the tunes a bit faster, you have, you've, you know, you've got that covered. 
So those are the four stages. So again, bonus tip number one, transpose in every key. Uh, obviously, if you really want to be aware of what's going on, transpose the tune. This is very common in standards and jazz. You want to transpose things so that, first of all, you create that mechanism. If you're playing with a singer, she wants to do this song in a different key that you've not been told, you can turn up and you will not be able to do it. So in this case, the, the way I do it, you know, the, the tune, the first tune is A7 and the melody starts from the 13th. I want to, obviously visually it's quite easy if I want to do it in C. That's the first line. If I want to change set of strings, I have to know where the 13th is. Let's say if I want to do it here. It's a bit more awkward in this set of strings, but you know, I want to be able to, to transpose in every key, or at least in a few keys, just to give you it, you know, the map of how the tune works in terms of functions. Okay. So that's a slightly more advanced thing that you can do. Uh, another trick that you can use, I use apps to change the key and change the pitch so I can play again along to the original, get the feel right. Uh, uh, one of them is Music Speed, Music Speed Changer uh, on Android, but there are tons of those. Uh, you can use YouTube and you can either use the Speed Changer in the, there's a, uh, you can change the speed to, you know, three quarters, half, or even go faster. Uh, and you can use plugins for a browser where, I mean, there are quite a few, you just Google speed changer, key changer in the browser plugins. On Chrome, there's a, a popular one where you can literally just change the, the speed or the key of a YouTube video. Uh, so yeah, those are all things that, um, obviously this is a, a tune that is available on YouTube. These are all things that I use to, to try and learn tunes as, as best that I can so that when I actually get to the gig, I'm prepared and I can enjoy playing rather than staring at a chart, so to speak, especially if I am the one that has to play the tune. And obviously, at the end of the day, you know, you have to be kind to yourself. And, and if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. There are situations where obviously you're more required to, to know the songs are higher pressure situation. Where like in pop music, it's more important to have a good tone and, and not make mistakes than take chances where in jazz, um, you know, it's more, people are more lean into some, you know, they're, they're not as worried about making a, playing a wrong note, so to speak. Uh, sometimes actually that leads to interesting things uh, where let's say in theater, you are, you want to play correctly, but you, you can read music, you know, theater is quite common to be able to read charts, even on stage, you know. So in the theater gigs, I mean, like West End shows or Broadway shows, so to speak, it's quite common to have a chart in front of you. It's not, you know, look, look down, so to speak. Where in pop music, you wouldn't do that because obviously you have to entertain, so to speak. Um, so it's, it's very much like genre specific, so to speak. Okay, I hope this really helps. I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to pop that um, slightly longer video today. I'm going to pop that... Uh, um, a patch in the folder and uh, again if this was of any value to you please consider sharing it to somebody that might get some value as well and short, share it through social media like subscribe the usual stuff all that you can do uh, that can help the channel grow uh, it's very much uh, appreciated thank you very much bye bye